hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for those of you who are new here my name is grace and today's video is a very exciting one because it is the first one of the year and that is the books i have read in the month of january and i have read a very impressive for me i'm not gonna you know compare myself to others but i've read 14 books and i'm quite proud of myself because they have been some amazing reads as well a lot of mystery and crime books so i do apologize if that's not your thing but there is a memoir and there's a couple of series in there as well just to keep things a bit more spicy so let's just jump straight in and four of those books are part of a series and i the first one I read was the second one in the series because I started these over Christmas and it is the Truly Devious series by Maureen Johnson. So I read The Vanishing Stair, The Hand on the Wall, The Box in the Woods and Nine Liars. So I finished the trilogy of The Truly Devious and then I read the two standalones, The Box in the Woods and Nine Liars and it was incredible. I mean, I definitely preferred the series to the standalones but I'm still really excited for these I've done a whole video review of these books so if you haven't seen that go check it out I don't want to do a full review but basically it's about Stevie who goes to this prestigious academy and she goes there to investigate the murders that happened there in the 1930s and along the way she just becomes a sleuth that's embroiled in so many other mysteries and murders and it's just a great YA series and then we went on to Prince Harry's memoir, Spare. Now, I don't want to review this because memoirs are, you know, they're somebody's account of their life and it's very personal and objective. Uh, but I will say I wasn't very impressed with the writing style and the quality of writing. I was quite shocked that in certain areas I felt it was very rushed. A lot of the segments were very fragmented. It was a lot of short sentence after short sentence, which they were trying to get for a dramatic effect. But I found it very difficult to want to keep going. Um, there were certain areas that I really enjoyed reading, some that I didn't quite so much because of the writing style, uh, but I definitely think it's worth a read if you're interested in that kind of thing. Uh, and then we go on to If We Were Villains, and this was a dark academia book. Uh, it's set in a university by a group of drama students who are doing their final Shakespeare play. And often a lot of the characters represent the characters they play in the Shakespeare plays. So like the Machiavelli Machiavellian, Machiavellian, that's a word, Machiavellian villain, and like the jester, the lovers, they all kind of feed into their normal lives and then a murder takes place and it's all about Oliver who gets done for this murder and we're not sure if he's entirely innocent or entirely guilty but it's about the detective who's come back and is basically asking Oliver to tell him the truth because it's his last case and he's retiring. I won't say it's my favourite Dark Academia, I definitely prefer The Secret History by Donna Tartt. Um, there were certain areas where I felt like it dragged on a bit and some of the character relationships I just didn't truly believe uh, but it was a good kind of submer submersion back into Dark Academia and it was a really good read to kick off the year. Next up I read Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell and I really love Lisa Jewell's writing. The Night She Disappeared was one of my favourite reads of last year so I thought I'd give another one of her books a go and this one was about Ellie who I think when she was 15 she disappears and it's like I think 10 years later and her mum Laurel is basically trying to put her life back together. She's gotten divorced from Ellie's dad She's not very close to her children and her life is a bit of a crumbly mess because she's just still holding out hope that her daughter will be returned to her. And she meets this very charismatic guy called Floyd who has a daughter who looks very much so like her disappeared child, Ellie. And from there, we just see Laurel getting close with Floyd, some red flags along the way. I don't want to spoil it. Um... I didn't like the twist as much as I thought I was going to. I didn't like the reveal. It was very predictable. And I feel like some of the 
kind of darker aspects that I wanted to know more about weren't explored uh and I just think it was rushed I don't know if other people would say that I just know that I just came away feeling a bit like oh okay well yeah I knew that happened so I don't really understand what the point was uh which I don't really like because up till the end like maybe the last 70 pages i was super into it and super into the stories it changed narratives it just was the ending fell a bit flat for me the eighth book i read this month was his and hers by alice feeney now this was another kindle read i'm fairly sure all of my books that i read this month were kindle reads so you can tell i am loving the kindle but his and hers was recommended to me it was a thriller it had really good reviews and ratings and it's about when a woman is murdered in this really small british village a newsreader called anna is doesn't really want to cover the case and detective jack harper is suspicious of anna and her involvement and that is until he becomes a suspect of the murder investigation and from there we see this kind of psychological thriller just explode we have kind of flashbacks to when anna was a child which really chilled me i am someone that can read any psychological thriller any murder mystery crime book and i don't often feel scared or feel like wow that was really disturbing but there were certain parts of this book that really sent shivers down my spine so definitely look at the kind of trigger warnings for this book because it was really heavy but the payoff was amazing how it all interwove and you just didn't see it coming or at least i didn't and i thought the kind of last couple of chapters it was so fast paced that you were just flipping through it and you get to the next page and something else would explode or kind of happen that was like wow what is going on so it was a really great book for me this one i think parts of it weren't as believable and were a bit uh rushed i think sometimes authors expose things very quickly and then brush over it uh mainly for shock factor i suppose but i thought anna's character was equally flawed as she was a heroine and a strong woman and jack harper the detective was very similar he was equally flawed as he was a hero and i just loved their coming together in this book and kind of their story that is also hidden so definitely give that a read if you're a psychological thriller fan ninth on my list is another thriller another crime one and that's the perfect marriage by jennifer rose now this is kind of my perfect plot line it's very reminiscent of how to get away with murder the series it's on netflix i believe if you haven't seen it the first series or first two series of that are excellent uh, but sarah is a very successful lawyer in washington and her husband adam is a pretty much a failing writer so very quintessential stereotypical thriller vibes already and sarah overworks herself to support her and her husband and meanwhile adam is having an affair in their lake house and uh that all kind of takes a turn when his mistress is found stabbed to death in bed uh and obviously he is the main suspect and sarah despite her being her and finding out that her husband had a mistress decides to take on the case and help support her husband i am not going to spoil the ending i was really enjoying this book up until a point i think uh i really got lost in it and that says something i think uh but looking back the amount of plot holes the amount of predictable scenes and characters that appeared i think it could have been so good but i think some of the plot holes let it down i think the fact that it was so stereotypical of what a thriller is also let it down and then the ending was the biggest letdown of them all because i thought to myself if this is what happens and i made a guess then i'm going to be so annoyed and it did and it just wasn't the payoff that i wanted i think some of the reveals some of the characters that had involvement just it was predictable but it was also rushed it wasn't really explained why and I was just let down. I thought it was going to be so good. I was interested in Sarah as a character. Uh, I was interested in Adam and their dynamic. 
but some of the characters it was just so obvious that they were doing what was then revealed and I don't know I don't like it when I can guess something I like there to be a shock so I would say probably three out of five stars maybe two and a half just because some of the plot holes and some of the reveals were just not reveals because I guessed them next up is local woman missing by mary kabuka and i'm fairly sure this last year was a nominee or it could have been 2021 it was a nominee on goodreads for best mystery and thriller and i can see why it was a slow burn it really picked up the pace in the last i would say 30 percent of the book uh you really do have to concentrate on all the different characters perspectives i didn't work it out until it was given to me and then when it was you just saw this character slowly turn from really lovely into really evil um so it's about this woman called shelby who uh is the first to go missing and then after that meredith and her six-year-old daughter delilah go missing and this is a really peaceful community everybody knows each other's businesses the neighbors are super close and then i think it's 11 years later somebody starts digging into the case and see that meredith and shelby are linked uh i'm not going to give why they're linked but there is a link and i think this was just really well written the scenes between the neighbors uh different perspectives into different homes this would make for a great tv series or a film in my opinion you could really drag it out and give different sides of the stories different povs i really enjoyed it i didn't see it coming which again makes for a great mystery and thriller i think maybe it could have been sped up a bit or it could have started off a bit more fun it was quite difficult to get into but once you are in it it is amazing so definitely would recommend that one next up we have when she returned by lucinda berry and i was really excited going into this it was one of the top rated kindle unlimited books in its category and i thought let's give it a go and i read the description and saw the word cult and i was like this is going to be great it's cult it's thriller i love things about cults and that kind of thing so i went into it really excited and i was mildly disappointed it's about this woman called kate who leaves her husband and daughter she disappears in the middle of nowhere uh, no in the i think in the parking parking a shopping mall parking space thing and she's never seen from for 11 years i think or 10 years something like that maybe even more um and then one day she turns up out of the blue she's had a baby and she's not really speaking about what's happened or where she's come from and then from there we see her husband is now remarried and there's new dynamics and i really really hated the husband in this and kate who has gone missing i thought they were so unlikable and i find that when i don't like characters that are kind of giving the main point of view and there's not really anything exciting going on other than them trying to figure out what's happened it just fell a bit flat it was like well yeah she joined a cult and dis and like left her family and i just don't get it i just didn't understand it i felt like the describing the description of the cult the description of her being brainwashed was just a bit meh it was there could have been more excitement there could have been just more i felt like the writer was holding back and i think because kate and her husband who is now remarried to another woman were just so not likable i just couldn't get past it and then the ending was just equally as bad i thought the fact that we're given oh i guess i could ex yeah okay so i'm just gonna say what happens so if you don't want to know skip ahead but basically kate convinces her now 16 year old daughter to come live with her uh so they go off and then all of a sudden uh she kate starts acting very weird spouting some very strange religious references that is scaring her daughter and then a van pulls up and it's other people from the cult and they're there to take kate and her daughter back and kate knew that this was going to happen kate has basically organized her own 16 year old daughter's kidnapping um so it was just 
I didn't see the point of going through a story of somebody escaping a cult only for them to go back and to see that the husband really mistreats his new wife and just neglects her and gaslights her and then the ending is the 16 year old daughter saying she wants nothing to do with her mum and her her stepmom and her dad just go off and that's that and I just thought I just it just didn't sit right it wasn't anything explosive or particularly interesting and I just really didn't gel with any of the characters I think if you read a book you want to at least enjoy somebody's perspective and I didn't enjoy anyone's perspective or feel like any of them were relatable in any way next up we have pretty baby by mary kabuka and now this was another letdown for me i felt like the main character was somebody that just wasn't relatable wasn't really very nice i think the only redeemable part of it was the flashbacks um so basically it's about a woman called heidi who starts off as this very charitable woman and she sees a young teenage girl on the station platform holding a baby and they're clearly homeless uh they've been out in the rain for a long time they've you know they haven't been looking after themselves because they haven't been able to and Heidi invites this teenage girl back into her home that she lives with with her husband and her teenage daughter and from there we have a lot of changing dynamics we have a lot of tension within the home between the husband and the daughter and this new teenage girl Heidi starts neglecting her family to focus on this baby it's revealed that Heidi was unable to have more than one child so there we see this obsession begin to grow with the baby until eventually she kind of has a bit of a breakdown and kicks the teenage girl out but keeps the baby um and I just I felt like it didn't really go where I wanted it to go the ending kind of paled off and it just didn't pack a punch like I thought it was going to do I felt like there were a lot of plot holes the perspectives and the point of views again it was an another one of those books where you couldn't relate to anyone in the book and none of them were particularly likeable or had any redeemable qualities really either which is insane because she helps a homeless teenage girl off the streets um so yeah a bit of a letdown for me which is surprising because mary kabuka wrote the amazing local woman missing which i really enjoyed this month so i'm not sure if i'm gonna kind of go into any of her other novels so you'll have to let me know if you've read any of her other books and really enjoyed them because pretty baby was just not for me the penultimate book i read this month was the best of friends by lucinda berry and this was amazing i absolutely adored this one i thought the changing perspectives between three friends was incredible we have lindsay kendra and danny and one night a tragic event occurs and kendra's son ends up dying from a gunshot wound um i think it's danny's son that uh is doesn't have any gunshot wounds but is incredibly mentally traumatized and Lindsay's son Jacob has been shot in the head but is in a coma um, and nobody knows what exactly happened or went wrong now you can predict what happened that night and I would say that the reveal of what happened that night is predictable but the way that the story is constructed is incredibly clever I thought I thought the writing was good I thought the fact that we're switching between three different family homes with three different you know husbands with children involved with different personalities that I thought could have failed really badly but the way it was done the personalities the differences between these three women and the way they run their homes was really evident and really clear and really well thought out and I thought the reveal of some of the things that happened that night was clever and you don't see coming um so I really enjoyed it it was full of like these suspicions between li like different links and dots that you had to try and connect for yourself um again I will say obviously you can predict kind of what happened that night I'm not going to say it was a surprise when it was revealed um but I thought it gave good closure it was one of those books that it's not groundbreaking but it was really enjoyable last but by no means least is from the embers by Ali Martinez and this is probably one of my favorite reads of this year I think there were some tropes I didn't enjoy like the dead ex trope I find that 
not enjoyable at all but the way it was done it was done in an incredibly emotive way and I'm not one for getting emotional while I read a book but I did in this one and I find even though it had those tropes I don't like I still enjoyed seeing the end result so basically it's about a tragedy occurs, Ethan and his wife and Brie and her husband are all together in a home and there's an explosion that leaves Ethan's wife dead and Brie's husband dead. Uh, so it's left to Brie and Ethan to pick up the pieces. Brie has, I believe, two children and Ethan has one and they end up living together in the same house because it was Ethan's house that exploded. And they're basically built on the fact that Eason and Bree's husband were best friends. And through that, we see a connection arise. And I don't want to go too much into that. I think the romance in this, whilst it was built on tropes I don't like, the romance in and of itself was enjoyable to watch and experience with the characters. I felt like Brie and Eason's perspectives were quite believable, despite the fact that they're falling each in love with each other's best friends, partners. Um, so that was strange. Um, but then we have kind of this ch children dynamics. We've got their careers that have been put on hold. And then we have this shocking, altering twist at the end, which was incredibly evil. I really enjoyed that. I thought that came out of the blue. I did not expect the book to go in that way at all. I thought it was just going to be this devastating, emotional romance. But then we have this crime that occurs and it's all about how how and who carried that out. So we have a lot of revelations going on. It's just a great book and it was marketed as a TikTok sensation on Kindle Unlimited which I almost kind of put me off a bit so I'm so glad I stuck with this because it was really emotional. It depicted some really horrible things that happened and from that they build this new life and I really enjoyed that. So I think what we have learned from the books I've read this month is I am a massive crime thriller, psychological thriller lover and I think in February I may need to read a bit of a wider range of books. Uh, I would like to read more romance, more contemporary fiction so if you have any recommendations please leave them down below, leave a comment, give me a suggestion. If you've read any of the books I've read this month, let me know how you enjoyed them or if you didn't. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!